In the fall of 2015, Sarah and I went to Rwanda. Coming from Israel and Palestine, we wanted to witness how, 20 years after the genocide, those young people overcame the divide, feelings of victimhood and guilt. We were mostly interested to learn about their process of forgiveness and reconciliation. For you, young generation, who is pushing you to, to stay in this tragic uh, relationship? You are from different countries, mm -hmm. and you say they, they have conflict. Okay, how do you come together? The process of reconciliation that happened to Rwanda, mm. um, it, it seems that they invested a lot in that and it was a priority. I would be um, very impressed and uh, also hopeful and inspired if I see it's different. Do they really uh, think differently now when the society is different or just seems like that? Genocide happened in many countries, yeah. but Rwanda is the only country that right after the genocide finished said we have to work on forgiveness for the future of our kids. Mm -hmm. And that is, I mean, in the entire world it never happened. And this is very inspiring for us, so we think that you have something to teach us. Mm -hmm. And maybe not only us, but other people. It's horrible. Neighbors turn on neighbors, friends on friends, even family of their own. Rwanda turned into a nation of brutal, sadistic, merciless this killers. This is the word, sadistic. Women were systematically raped and abused in the church during the killing. Wow. He was four during the genocide and he survived sleeping under banana leaves and stealing crops from fields to eat. Throughout Rwanda, youth are engaged in peace, education, programs and unity clubs. Like face your past and focus on the future. When we are facing our future and focusing on our past. <laughs> Right after the genocide, when he was a kid, and he was seeing the kids whose parents had killed someone, and he lost his parents, he was full of hatred, and he just wanted to, to kick them and to be violent with them. And when the families of the people in jail were going to visit them in jail, the survivors, they would throw rocks at them. Wow. His family were killers during the genocide. When he was going to jail to visit his father, the people were throwing rocks at him. And so when he would see the people waiting for him, he would feel so ashamed that sometimes he would just walk back home and not go. Oh. Young Rwandans, some of them, they are victims because they are coming from the family who committed genocide. Um, they are considered in society as genociders. The orphans of genocide also, they suffer because they have lost everybody. But when they sit together, they have learned that both they are victims of the genocide. We create a space of dialogue, of debate, of where people can express themselves. And going up with this culture of reconciliation and knowing each other and and um, having dialogue all the time, 
when, when they will become leaders one day, they will... It can't happen again. Yes. They look to the history, they discuss about the history, and they talk about the future. It gives them confidence that the only way to build the future for themselves, the only way to, 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 to really to confirm never again, is that they have to participate, but also they have to forgive each other. Ye mari da chinga kaboko na ware kuroko ka fourteen years. And you always have in mind that the enemy was a bad guy, that this other side that did that, or you decide that what you have to focus on is the future that you, you let go of the past, and you decide to look at the other as a potential partner. I think it's Nelson Mandela who talked about that, like you cannot make peace with your friend. No. We never were taught to forgive. The enemy stays the enemy. And as long as you don't forgive him, he stays the enemy. So because of what happened to Rwanda and what they went through with the genocide, it was important to include unity and reconciliation as part of their curriculum. And so since primary schools, they have courses about unity and reconciliation. They are building the next generation of leaders. So learning that is making sure that it won't happen again. And education is, yes. uh, is the seeds. Do you think that the club, being part of this club, will help you mm -hmm. in, the yes. in the future? In the future. Yeah, of course. We learn from the past to make our the future. future. Yeah. You're yeah, preparing a future not club. You're very uh, wise for I'm very smart. For teenagers. <laughs> then we learn from our bad history and not to make a good future. But we are still we are still fighting or striving to make our country more and more better. When you are one peoples, you can do anything what you want. As a as a Rwandan generation, you have you want to go, to have a good future because in order to get that future, you must be serious for protecting our peace and and the reconciliation. I think that there used to be in the time when women were considered like the housewives only. But now that we have good leaders and we have determination, everything is looking up. So you are uh, for gender equality? Yeah. Uh, that's good. <laughs> The office of Yala, actually, there are more women than men. Mm. Uh, so we're really promoting that kind of equality. Mm. But there's still work to do. Yeah. After my high school, I was not allowed to join my, my university because they were saying those are enough. You have to get married because women are not allowed to start there for oh. high schools. But by now I could go there and speak to them, teach them, speak English, because by the time we joined the killer, I wasn't able to speak English. So now they are saying, ah, well, maybe you'll make things that are needed. Wow. Mm. Amazing. Because what happened in the past, the big part was the youth. And today, looking at, looking at Rwanda, you, you find that the youth is united and is willing to develop the country and it is working because you, you may see the development that you are reaching. Yeah. You forgot something. This is the path toward reconciliation. Oh, it's his wife. Ah. Felicitations. <laughs> His parents were killers and her parents were killed. But they are together and they are in love. And they have one heart. Wow. Where we come from, when we talk about forgiving, we think it's forgetting. And they showed us that forgiving is not forgetting, but moving forward and being stronger. Exactly. And building a future. That's why they can sit together, that's why they can marry from each other. 
that's why they stopped suffering. If, if the if the even just decided to hide it, the perpetrators would be afraid and ashamed, and the, the survivors would be suffering and and angry. Mm -hmm. I know, I'm there. the more I'm learning about how they deal with their young generation here, the more I'm worried about our future. Look at the generation, how many wars they experienced already. Yeah. Uh, there's complete divide. Uh, the only way they, they might learn about each other is through the web. Yeah. If somebody channeled them to that, but... But, but yeah, they can spend their but entire much life. They don't see. They don't yeah, see they can the other side. Yeah, they spend their entire life without seeing from one from no. the other side. Until, unless there's a war or something, yeah. then oh, who are they? Why they are doing this to us? What happens when you give people, especially young people, the freedom and the confidence, and tell them lead? Mm -hmm. They will take things beyond your expectations. They took their own destiny in their own hands, and they decided to shape the future of their lives and of their country through youth empowerment, women empowerment, economical development. Yeah. We should show young people how they can take destiny on their own hand. How they can use the online technologies such as the platform that Yala offer to meet those young people, their, their partners on the other side and learn together and work together for a better future for everyone.